I'd like to call the meeting to order, 5.30. And we're going to start with um, the Board of Liquor Control. Any changes to the agenda or additions? No. Okay. I'd like to approve the minutes of November 6th from 2023. I'll move the minutes of November 6th, 2023, Board of Tobacco and Liquor Control. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And move to approve liquor license renewals for Timber LLC. And I think Carrie is sitting in for Sarah tonight. Uh, for Sarah, and Jason just uh, spoke to us. He has no issues with this renewal. I'll make a motion to approve the liquor license for for Timber, for Timber LLC. Second. I have a motion and a second. Um, any discussion? It's uh, it looks like the uh, tacos and Star? used to be it's the oasis I think it used to be oasis. tacos. Oasis, thank you. Okay, just like that. Yeah, I thought that's who it was. Just check it. Thank you. Um, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion is passed. Uh, any tobacco license applications and no. any requests for catering permits? Nope. And I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. <clears throat> so moved. I have a motion. I have a second. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those, um, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Could I start um, adjourning the meeting for, um, not adjourning, start the meeting for the select board meeting at 532. Any changes or additions to our agenda? Uh, we are recommending that you uh, remove item number six, which is approving and extending Percy contract for the Duomo Pit Hall Road. You don't have a contract at this time. Okay, thank you. Looking for approval for the minutes from November 6, 2023. I'll move the minutes of November 6, 2023. I have a motion or a second. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to approve minutes from November 13th, 2023. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from November 13th, 2023. I have second. a motion. My motion is second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion is passed. Motion to approve minutes from November 27th, 2023. So moved. I have a motion to have a second. Second. I have a motion to have a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion is passed. New business, re review and support Vermont Department of Fish and Wildlife acquisition of 637 Duhamel Road, Avery property. Great, yeah, we have three members of Fish and Wildlife. Um, Will Eldridge, Will. Dwayne. And? Sam. Awesome. They're gonna briefly uh, provide an overview on what they're asking us to do. Okay, even, even though Carrie introduced you when you speak, could you uh, introduce yourselves again? The microphone does not um, magnify your voice in here. It's basically for the recording. Yeah. Um, so my name is Will Eldridge. I'm a fish and, fish and wildlife aquatic habitat biologist. I've been the project manager on this. I asked Will Duane to attend this meeting as well because he's our land acquisition coordinator. And so he has more experience with this. This honestly is my first time doing an acquisition. So it's good to have somebody who's experience on this and then Sam has been the one uh, actually doing most of all the on the ground work and coordinating with um, Don Avery over there but so Will's yeah. gonna talk about the process and this parcel great thank you Will thank you uh, yeah Will Duane last name is D-U-A-N-E I'm the land acquisition coordinator for the Vermont Department of Fish and Wildlife I'm um, technically in the wildlife division this is a project in our fish division so we're, we kind of get all of us here tonight um, the Department of Fish and Wildlife um, purchases, acquires lands for two purposes primarily, it's kind of 1A, wildlife habitat, and then 1B, public access. Uh, we have over 130 acres in state ownership statewide in our department. It's a combination of our wildlife management areas uh, and our stream bank management parcels. They're not quite as high profile as the state parks and the state forests, but if you look for us, we're out there. Um, we offer dispersed, non-motorized, non-mechanized uh, recreation. So what that means is hunting, angling, trapping, 
and any other low impact activity. We don't do mountain bike trails or ATV riding on our state properties. It's primarily we want to leave them as wild as possible and we'll make it possible for folks to park. But from then on, you're kind of on your own. Um, we have a statute whenever we acquire a property that we have to abide by. Uh, we have to get approval from both the secretary of our agency, but also the governor. Uh, we're required by statute just to notify towns, but we like to be good neighbors where we're working. So we're here tonight to hopefully uh, ask for your support in this transaction. Um, we provided a, a template letter of support, which you're more than welcome to use. You can edit that in any way you like, but also just a, a, a note in your meeting minutes that you don't oppose the project is, is something we'll take as well. So um, we'll talk a little bit more about uh, the pilot payment and the taxes a little later, um, but that's just kind of who we are and why we're here. And Will is going to give you a little more specifics about this project. Thank you. Yeah, hi, uh, Will Eldridge again. Um, so yeah, so the, uh, this parcel, um, so the state owns uh, some property around Don Avery's uh, property, the, the Avery parcel. And so we've been talking with Don for a while now about um, things he can do. He's He's been worried about flooding on his property for a while. So he's trying to try to coordinate with us, you know, things that he can do. Um, and uh, we we went out there with uh, the, the DEC, the Department of Environmental Conservation River Scientist, met with Don on the property and basically came to the realization that there really wasn't much that could be done to reduce the flood risks to this property. It's at the confluence of Kenfield Brook and the Lamoille River. Um, and Don has, uh, can explain to you what's what the, the challenges of living there. Um, so after the this most recent flood, July 20, uh, 2023 flood, um, Don, the, Don called me about a week later and asked if the Fish and Wildlife Department was, would be interested in acquiring the property, um, his property. Uh, as you can see from the photos, it was underwater. Um, Don said it was about <coughs> four feet of water or so. Well, it was 20 inches to house and four feet in bottom. Okay, four feet, all right, yeah. Um, so yes, and it was also the seventh time it's been flooded since you've lived there. Um, it's the seventh time it's had the hundred year flood. Okay, seventh time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Anyway, um, yeah. So uh, anyway, he had, he he voluntarily approached us and asked if we would be interested in acquiring it. Um, so yeah, we we looked into so that's something we we would be interested in for the reasons that Will Duane explained. Um, this is a property that's adjacent to the Kenfield Brook, which is an important stream for us from a fish habitat that standpoint. Um, plus the public access, you do have access to the uh, Lamoille there uh, for canoeing and and paddling. We also were out there and saw some uh, kayakers <laughs> in Kenfield Brook taking advantage of some of the high flows. So it's um, a wide range of uses. There's also the Terrell Gorge up there, uh, if you're familiar with that area. Um, so anyway, a wide variety of uses um, for this property that would be that would be in, um, protected in perpetuity through state ownership. Um, we're, we're working with the Vermont Emergency Management to um, secure funding for this acquisition. Uh, if, we, um, if we're successful with them, they would require us to remove the structures that are there, um, so it would be restored to a natural floodplain. That's consistent with how we would want to manage it. So um, we we would, as Will explained, we would manage it for these natural processes, natural conditions. Um, that whole process is probably going to take about a year um, to complete. So this wouldn't, this isn't anything that we're. It's it's going to happen right away. Um, that being said, we still do want to get the approval as soon as possible so that we can keep working through. The process, um, but in the long term, this would this would be restored to a, a forested floodplain, probably, um, is what we would uh, our goals would be. Uh, I think that's it. Is there any, oh, the pilot payment. Oh yeah, yeah. just wanted yeah. to talk about um, property taxes and how that works when there's state ownership in the <laughs> municipality. Uh, the agency of natural resources, as a landowner, does not pay property taxes, but we do make an annual payment. It's called the pilot payment in lieu of tax. It would be the property taxes that you receive currently for the stream bank management parcels. Those property taxes are based on the value of the land minus the structures and improvements in the year of the acquisition 
at that year's property tax rate. So it gets locked in and then we're required by statute every three years uh, for the secretary to reevaluate it and increase the pilot if they feel necessary. Um, we just did our most recent increase two years ago. It, it went up 1.3%. It does not track with how towns might increase their property taxes, but it is adjusted over time. Um, our lands administration unit estimated the annual pilot payments for this property at uh, $1,422 annually. And those would begin uh, in the year after acquisition. So if we are able to take control, we would likely close on the acquisition after April 1 of next year, which is the property tax holder date. So that pilot payment would again uh, begin in calendar year 25. I think that's it. So just to, so you, you, I think you pretty well said this, but the intent here is to return the property back to its original state, back to a, a forested floodplain. Yeah, um, I mean, something I'll, uh, something I'll add is that um, Don has asked that the, the, the barn in particular be preserved to whatever extent possible. We probably can't do that on site. And so we work with our historic preservation office and others to try and find another location to rebuild the barn. Um, we do have experience with this with, with some of our other acquisitions where we were, we bought farms that have been retired and had to dismantle the structures and move them elsewhere. So that that's the same process we do here. Yeah, we've become pretty good at decommissioning and auctioning farms in the last five years. As far as you know, is there anything buried on the property that would need to be removed? As far as we know, no. <laughs> We're still in the early phases. Uh, we will do an environmental phase Bodies. one review. <laughs> yeah. um, we do the, in our due diligence steps, we'll do a phase one environmental review and then likely a phase two review. Uh, but it's mostly just through communication with the landowner where we find out those things. Would people be hunting on the property? It would hunting? be allowed to use, yeah. I'm just wondering because now people don't hunt on it, and I'm just wondering how that works there. Yeah, I mean, I think. Can I ask you to go to the mic, please? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Can't of course. Do Thank you. Uh, yeah, I can speak to that. Uh, hunting, trapping, angling, those are all allowed uses on the parcels once we do take them over. Um, we don't have any plans to build a new access or parking area as we typically do at some of our wildlife management areas, this being a stream bank management parcel. We wouldn't necessarily build the access toward that, but I don't want to say that there won't be hunting where there isn't hunting. I'll just, I'll just add that um, if there's concerns about uh, hunters hunting safety, that the wardens would be responsible for enforcing uh, regulations on the property, hunting regulations. So it, I, yes, hunting is allowed use, but I don't think there'd be any risk to increase risk to people because of it. Um, I'm just curious because our, yeah. our pit goes a <coughs> road to up to the pit goes there and I, I don't know when hunting season happens but sure. wondering if our people or trucks would be uh, targets unexpected targets I, I'll say that we have a robust hunter safety education program at the department and incidences that you're describing are, are few and far between okay. that, that property is currently open hunting as well but pit property you can still hunt there. Right. But so I, I didn't know if our drivers would be. I, be it wouldn't be, in my opinion, it wouldn't be any different be than what we currently have. Yeah, we don't anticipate a major increase in the hunting in the area. I have a feeling they're not active at that time of the year there. In the pit. I, that's what I, did, I didn't know. Yeah, yeah, the rifle season, well, bear hunting is earlier, but the rifle season is the first one. Uh, one week into November, going to the end of the year. Just out of curiosity, uh, you mentioned the public access to the Memorial River. Is there any potential there would ever be commercial access there? No, we uh, maybe if you know a little bit more about the access area rules, we don't allow for commercial operations at the access areas. We okay. I, I used to work for UMIAC. <laughs> <So. laughs> yeah. Uh, I Just mean, curious. You know, that being said, the, this is a unique situation where yeah. the, the currently the parking and the access is technically not on state land. Mm -hmm. um, so I we we have no authority over okay. what kind of activities are done through the at the at the parking area uh -huh. you know and if people want to access the river um going through our property i don't i mean it's a good question i'm not sure what kind of enforcement if that would be an issue you're always, looking for, uh, you're always yeah. looking for access trying yeah. to keep us on time <laughs> 
Good. Surprised myself, though. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I set the timer, but you're good. You're all good. Um, if you have more questions, obviously, we can well, continue. Well, I do. Have, I have one more um, just statement for uh, Don. I want to thank him because if anyone has been over there when it was at its prime, it was magical. It was a beautiful, it was like botanical gardens. Um, and to see this underwater, you can see the beautiful trees. I, I hope you were able to save some of those magnificent plants and stuff and it's a real loss because it was absolutely gorgeous and uh, you'll, you'll be missed in the community i'll just say many of the peonies are saved at my house <laughs> oh nice <laughs> from years ago yeah, yeah i would i would make a motion that we uh support the acquisition of 637 Dewhamel road by the vermont department of fish and wildlife for I would the just... purposes of returning it to its original state and it's forested floodplain. Don, I would just um, maybe authorize Judy to sign a letter of um, and support. And authorize Judy Bickford to sign the letter. Thank you. I'll second that. Okay, and a motion is second. Any discussion? Good Go ahead, come on up. <clears throat> Jason Kelly, first assistant chief, Morso Fire. I'm just wondering about access to the swimming hole that's there. Does that still happen? You're, you're talk, uh, sorry, you're talking about the Terrell Gorge? Yes. Yeah, uh, that wouldn't change. Um, I mean, there's already access from Stagecoach Road. Um, so that would continue. And then this would probably, people could now go through the, the nursery to get up there. I think they still they can already. But now it would be through state property. Would yeah. it be access for us as a fire department to drive through like we usually do when there's an accident there? To drive through, you um, drive into the swimming hole, so it's a lot shorter to haul out. Um, are you coming through stagecoach? No, we're coming through the Avery property. To the Avery property, uh, that's a different kind of access. Generally, it's we're talking about foot access. Um, I I think that's something we'd have to talk about because yeah, I mean right now the stagecoach seems like, but it's straight uphill to get somebody out. Yeah, no, I hear you. I, I think that's a good point. We definitely would have to. Yeah, we can talk about usually, that. You can usually drive a truck within a hundred feet or so of this one. Right. Uh, something we something we hadn't uh, contemplated before, but an extremely good point. Um, if you'll allow us, we can look into that question yeah. and certainly get back to you. Okay. Yeah. We would do what we can to make sure it's sure. still allowed. The other question I had was, how do you guys remove the house? We always look for houses. Yes, I was going to ask. That. <laughs> do you know any oh, training? About? We training. all think about training. Yes. They want. Oh, they want to burn your house. Well, we yeah, they're looking at. We can reduce your house. Like, you can't buy you a house. Uh, right. well, I'll say that. I'm gonna, well, yeah. I think we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll commit yeah. to work toward that as a possibility, right? When it comes time to start making more I mean, the reality is that we are. What happens to the house is a little bit out of our hands. We are subject to the, what's called the uh, Vermont um, Forest Historic Preservation um, Act. And so the house is from the 1850s, I believe. Anyway, so they, they may have some uh, requirements in terms of what happens to the structure. So again, we I haven't even begun to talk to them about it. Um, but we want to have, I mean, we're happy to, if need, if need be, if it's a story, we're going to try and preserve it. That's great. Yeah. If not, yeah, we're always here. Absolutely. Keep that in mind. Thank you. Charlie? Uh, yeah, I'm just going to add that. My name is Charles Burnham, and I'm wondering from the state, uh, there exists some certain springs and water rights uh, associated with the property. And uh, I think it would be in the town's best interest to extinguish those springs and, and water rights as it pertains to the town's property or nearby, um, since there won't be any dwelling units on the property and, and shouldn't be there, any use. There anyway, are, it's an area that the town should be interested in to, to follow up on. The property benefits from rights granted to it from municipal property? I won't get into details, okay. but there are there are some certain springs, which everybody here is familiar with, uh, that are up there. We have a, a, a law firm doing the title search right now, so we will. Well, I understand those. they'll find them, and, yeah. and it would be in the town's best interest for those to be extinguished. Understood. Uh, we typically have no need to um, keep those in place so long as they don't infringe with any other private property owner's use or any covenants they might have on the land, but it's certainly something we can commit to. 
Is it a should be something that the select board should be mindful of as yeah. we proceed? Yeah. Can, I, can I inquire if it's a financial burden from the town or a, a liability burden from the town? That yeah, the Recording stopped. Recording in progress. All right. Well, I'm glad we're doing that. <clears throat> Good questions. That was funny. Thank you, John. Thanks, Don. Hold that. Yeah, she was a student at Estelle High School. Right? It sure was. Yeah. Like, yeah. I recognize Number two, introduce Elizabeth Townsend, HR Director. Yes, so um, I was involved with Chris um, along with Jason and Tina, and we interviewed a number of people, and we are proud to welcome Elizabeth Townsend, who if you could just stand up or come up and just say hello. Um, she joined us and started today. Yes. Nothing All like right. trial by fire, come to a meeting. <laughs> yes, thank you for the introduction, Elizabeth Townsend. Uh, very happy to be here serving as the HR director. Um, <clears throat> proud to be part of such a great office group and community and looking forward to partnering with you all going forward. What are those on Zoom? Elizabeth, um, before you leave, do you yeah. want to just so the public, this is their first opportunity to meet you. Do you want yeah. to just maybe highlight a little bit about your work history and, and your you yeah, know, where you live and a little bit of your personal information? Yeah, happy to. Um, so I recently completed 10 years um, HR experience with the federal government, Thanks, which I think I can um, have a lot of helpful takeaways from that and apply it to this position. Um, I've also worked in the private sector, in the international development field, have a few human resources certifications um, and memberships that will definitely be useful in this position. Um, and personally, my family is actually in the process of relocating here to Morrisville from Fairfax. So very excited to be even more involved in the community and you know see the impact that our group can make on you know everyone here and everyone locally in the area. Yeah, very excited. Welcome. We're glad to have you. you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Number three, approve errors and emissions certificate. So I believe Charlie's here, right? We're going to yes. have him come up and give you an overview. Or is your report, is it 30 minutes? About 30 seconds. <laughs> but the errors and emissions, uh, I think you have the paperwork in front of you. It's just one. And it was a, it was a transposition error made by the assessors where they thought there was two septic systems on a property and two wells. And actually, there's only one. So there's the adjustment. All right, thank you. I would thank make you. the motion to accept the errors and emissions certificate for the Jason and Karen Tibbetts property, reducing their value by $15,000, correcting an error where there were two sewer charges and there should be one sewer and one water. I have a motion of a second. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Go ahead, come on up. We had a, someone coming up to the microphone. Yep, uh, Tony Cody, Cody Hill. I had the same thing, uh, $20,000. How come mine wasn't thrown out there? We're not the, we can't answer that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Who, who, who does it? Conversation maybe you have with the listers, Tony? No, they need to come to me. I'm not going to them. Okay, you need to bring it to no, I mean, I, I they, they, they took it off. But I just wondered, I wondered why it was put on the agenda like that. I'm not sure I can answer that. You were no. probably in a, a, a grouping of them. 
This is just an individual straggler, so. When we approve these, Tony, sometimes there's almost two pages of these, particularly yeah. in the beginning of the um, Arizona. Oh, so it was, it was done. It was done after. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm right. After 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 the uh, grievance procedure. That's correct. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That wasn't clear. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. <clears throat> and I, honestly, there's a lot of mistakes that are found. There's not a lot of mistakes. There are when mistakes happen, they get found ahead of the lodge, lodging of the grand list. That doesn't require any, you know. It just right. gets repaired. It just gets fixed. Okay. Right. But if I hadn't gone to that group, I would have been there. Fair. That's exactly why we have just to trying to explain the whole process. Yeah. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion is passed. And then there's another one. Charlie, mm -hmm. I think you're up next too. Approve and sign certificate of no appeal or suit pending grand list. Is that you? I would yes. I would move to uh, sign the certificate of no appeal or suit pending <clears throat> presented I'll by the uh, listers. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Alex, come on up. Hi, Alex here. Um, I live here in Morristown. I just see that it says it's supposed to be done no earlier than the February after the grand list is approved. So I'm wondering if this is a little bit late or a little bit early. Um, Considering we're a few months a few months away from February on either side, I believe it's early. Charlie, I didn't understand the question. So, in, a question? that's a question. Uh, a question. Um, because the the form that the select board's considering um, says on this date, no earlier than the first Tuesday of February following the lodging of the grand list. So I was wondering, is this about the grand list that was lodged in? 2022 and it's just been a few months since February or is this about the one that was lodged this year and it's not February yet? I would say that's a very good question and I don't have an answer. <laughs> I'll be glad to uh, find out. And, uh, okay, so um, just for those people who are on Zoom, Charlie's gonna look into it. He doesn't have an exact answer to, his, to Alex's question. The question, Charlie, is, is that the, the grand list has been has been validated and registered. Is that correct with correct. the state? So at this point, um, you're saying that there's no more errors in emissions. The, the right. uh, grand... door is closed, and we're certifying that there's no lawsuits pending, and uh, this is it. Okay. Is but we don't know if there's some magic date that has to do with February. Um, uh, on this form, I mean, I guess my question really is: Is that is there no harm? Okay, so why don't we table this at this point? And um, thank you, Alex, for. I don't know what, but, you know, Sarah or Missy here can tell. Us Usually, we try to do all A and M, A and uh, B and O's. Got the wrong acronyms by the end of every fiscal year. You know, I mean, I mean by the end of the calendar year, just because you want it all in this one year so you can then uh -huh. send correct it correcting uh, tax bills so normally this that february deadline is just in case a town is really behind but we're not you're not um yeah, you can still table it but generally that's a town's try to get all the you know's done in december so it's something if we felt that we I could every town is required to file this this report with the, with the state yeah. and i don't know if there's some statutory deadlines yeah. Up against or not. That's, a, that's interesting, but it's. Well, why don't, why don't we do? You can wait two weeks. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. There's no. Why don't we do that? We're not. We, it's uh, not February. So. Right. We could give them. We'll meet again in two weeks. We can have that conversation. It'll be before the end of the mm -hmm. calendar year. And so I would. Um, I would withdraw my motion. Well, uh, I need to withdraw the second. I'm sorry. <clears throat> okay, is that we're done with that then? For Correct. Right now. Okay, yep. good. We're gonna hold number four. All okay. right, number so, five. I'm sorry. I was just gonna say, so we are gonna consider number four at the next meeting. Then. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, number five, approve uh, Morrisville Fire Department purchase combine tool of fourteen thousand four hundred dollars and twenty nine cents. I think. Are you speaking on that? I think you. I think yes. you're it. 
Thank you. Jason Kelly, First Citizen Chief, Morrisville Fire. Yep, we want approval to purchase a combi tool for $14,429. Can you tell us what that is? <clears throat> so it's a tool that does uh, spreading and cutting for car extrication. Okay. It's battery operated, just like our other tool, two tools we currently have on our rescue truck. This will sit on our engine one. And this is being brought to us because it's above a certain limit and has to come to us. And right now? I did not build this agenda. I will, I'm not positive. I believe that's the case. Okay. Yep. That's my it's over 10. Yeah. yeah right. And it's it's over. All, this is already in your budget, correct? Line item is for 12.5. Okay. For a large equipment. And we don't have any kind of paperwork. I'm not missing anything in here. Is that correct? Right. Okay. Right. And so where would you get the other money for to pay for that? You have it in the budget? In somewhere? the budget, yes. It's in the budget. Okay, good. All right. Um, this so this was a bid process that you did you put this this tool out to bid or was it a company that you've done business with? There's a purchase where we bought purchased them before. We have the same one we put on our engine three when we purchased it. So we have a we have a cutter and a spreader and a cutter on engine three. And they're two separate tools at this point. This replaces it as one separate this one. will be an additional tool on another truck. Okay. Right. So if we had an extra more than one or two vehicles we could use as another tool and if we go mutual aid in our engine we could also when we go to another town with our engine uh, we cover a station we only have our fire equipment and this truck would then give us some uh, extrication equipment yeah. all right well I, I would make the motion to approve the expenditure um, which is already currently in our past budget for uh, combi tool at fourteen thousand four hundred dollars and twenty nine cents. I'll second that. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Number seven: Accept Kelly Mayo's and Peter Fitz's resignation from EMS. Do you want to speak about that, Bill, or did someone else do? <laughs> Hi, good evening, Bill Mapes, EMS Chief. Um, when we made the transition with the budget approval from a uh, volunteer uh, part of our agency to a uh, part-time unbenefited and increased the pay from three to 15, um, we reached out to four members who had uh, been unable to do any hours for quite some time. Uh, two of those people that we reached out to are Kelly and Peter, uh, who have effectively both resigned from the agency. This opens up slots for us to move more people into as people come to us or as we start to fill some of these other positions. Um, the other two people we'll be reaching back out to here shortly and uh, uh, figuring out what their, what their uh, process is and where they are. Uh, but uh, Kelly and Peter have responded appropriately and uh, both uh, uh, Kelly in writing and Peter verbally uh, have tendered their resignations uh, from that part of our agency. So this is a way to formalize their inability to really yes, sir. do what yes, they sir. might have thought they were able to do. Yes. Sir. Right. Thanks. Sure. Have a motion. I'll make a motion to accept the resignation of Kelly Mayo and Peter Fitz from EMS. A second. I have a motion. A second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 The motion has, uh, resignations have been accepted. And number eight, you might, you might, I don't know if you want to step here for this, approve new wage for Colby Massey's paramedic certification. Hi, me again. Um, uh, Colby Massey, um, I've reported out of one of the previous department head agents had successfully obtained his national registry paramedic certification. Uh, last week, he also received his Vermont license. Um, uh, this past week, Dr. Uh, Ann O'Connor, the new district medical advisor for EMS District 4, signed off on his Copley Pharmacy paperwork. Um, so uh, Colby is ready to go, uh, and uh, concomitant to that is a, uh, is a wage increase that goes with that increased certification, and that's what we're asking approval for. Okay. I'll make... Uh... To generate discussion, if need be, I'll move to increase Colby Massey's hourly rate of pay to $25.40 per hour to reflect his new paramedic level certification. This is step seven on the current pay plan. This will be effective with the December 7th payroll. 
Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I have no objection to that. I just want to know. Just that. Tell, tell us who you are. My again. name is Tom Cloutier. Is that the uh, the come out of last year's budget or they pay coming out of the budget we're working on now? It'd be the budget current budget um, that we have in place now. Right now. Yes. Okay. Um, did we vote yet? No. 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 Okay. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion is passed. Number nine, review and adopt the select board working agreement from recent workshop with David Ford. Um, just a little introduction. Um, we, uh, several, four of the board members met to work on a working agreement with David Ford. Took us through a nice process of working together and how we would, um, what are some of the things we agreed that we would do together as a board. And uh, many organizations do this. A lot of select boards or a lot of school boards uh, have these kind of trainings because the turnover on the boards is different. Um, we all, all come in at different times during the, uh, a, some of a two year term, some of a three year term. So everybody's moving in a different time period on the board. So it really helps us to have an agreement that this is what we want to do as a board. It doesn't affect uh the business of the town it doesn't affect the participation of people in the audience it just affects how we work together or how the board works together and um there were 10 items on the list as you can see does uh, anybody you want to put it into a motion first do you want to how do you want to handle this do you want to just discuss it before we talk about well, it? I think discussion ahead. normally comes after a motion and a second. Okay. So I would move to um, accept the working agreement for the Morristown Select Board. Okay. Do I have a second? I'll so second it. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yes. I have been very vocal about uh, this. We, uh, I have on several occasions asked. Uh, I spoke with VLCT to uh, give our give us our direction about this exact problem. Uh, I have asked several times to be on the agenda at the direction by the attorneys at VCLT, given specifics on how to go forward addressing communications. Um, and their advice was again to do it in a public forum because the public are uh, involved. And I personally have been involved. I find this document, um, I did not do it. And I will tell you behind the scenes, I was literally harassed, um, asked twice to be taken off the email thing because I had made it clear. Um, I was, there was an attempt to intimidate me in the meeting, which I thought was incredibly inappropriate. Um, once I asked to be taken off the emails twice, I then was solicited by the person hosting it, um, which to me is even more offensive. Um, I think we as professionals, I find this offensive. We are given directive uh, as professionals and we were hired, you know, elected, we are elected officials. We are under the direction of the VLCT statutes, um, state law, federal law, and that that should be enough. And I believe that actions speak much uh, larger than words, and I find this absolutely hypocritical because so far none of this has been observed. And um, you can, I will gladly show my emails. VCLT says we can gladly send out information. There cannot be uh, conversation. I send out information, crickets. And you're welcome to look at my emails. I don't have ever gotten any, and I ever gotten any kind of information really. I did get some today that I requested. So the fact that uh, Judy Bickford put this on the agenda over request in the six months I've been here, I've never had an agenda item put on. Um, as a, a public servant, uh, as a public attendee, I was never, could never get a, an agenda on. Most of the staff here now is being paid. Your tax dollars are paying for this. And I find that offensive. And I want to make it very clear that I'm not in favor of this. And I really resent that my time, I've been up since four o'clock 
<coughs> shoveling snow. I have gone to work for an agriculture, as, as an essential agricultural job because they can't get anybody and having to sit here for this is appalling to me. And just the hypocrisies, I, I can't believe it again to tell you. So that's my opinion. Thank you. Anybody else? Well, you know, when we first um, got together to um, go through this exercise with David Ford, um, I felt that the you know the clinic that he held was was useful. I think that it was a, a good reminder for um, the board members um, really what is expected of, of members in terms of preparation and um, and participation and respect. Um, I think that you know going through the training. Um, Many of these things um, I felt were being uh, were really being um, adhered to by this board. Um, I see this working agreement, motion for it, and signing for it as more of a preparation for future boards. I think that we've we've gone through a training, we've had this discussion with him um, and amongst ourselves. But I think that you know typically. New board members come from the community. Oftentimes, they do not have experience serving on other boards, much less a select board. I think that um, when I came on and I was appointed in April, I was handed a packet from Human Resources. It said, "This is this is the booklet that you need to review. It has all of the working documents that you need to be aware of." And I think that this is, would be a good addition to that. It sets down clearly to new members, what's expected. And I think it's a good useful tool, I guess, is, is, is my, my sense. Um, do I think that it's germane necessarily for this board now? No, because we went through it, but I think for future boards, it could be a useful tool. So I, I, I support this. And I, I think that uh, um, we should just move forward with this and get on with the agenda. And I will say that VCLT, when I came on, Richard, unfortunately, coming in the middle, didn't have access, but he will in spring. They hold a formal training for select board members that is run by seasoned attorneys. So um, I'm not sure why we need to add to that. So I, I agree, let's move on to wasting time. There's a question. I guess the only thing I would say is, well, I, 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 I'm sorry this has become such a big issue because I don't think it is a big issue. I think it's, I think it's just kind of uh, common sense that an organization would have expectations like this. I, um, I for example, joined the uh, Morrisville Co-op Board two years ago, and they have very similar expectations. Uh, it, this isn't unusual. This isn't what organizations don't do. Um, I also think it's worth saying, this is one of those opportunities to be a little bit proactive, to not wait until there's a problem and then put a document like this out there, but rather to be proactive and, and get it out there before there is an issue, which is what we typically do, unfortunately. Um, so I welcome it for that reason. I also. I think these are these are all very commonsensical statements that you would expect all board members to adhere to. I think we are, for the most part, adhering to it. Have I adhered to every single one of these every time? Of course not. I think it would be hard for any board member to adhere to this all the time, every time. But it does set out what the expectations are, and I think uh, I think it's good to have guidelines like this. VLCT, as you said, uh, Laura, you know, has similar. Uh, statements of what they you would expect of uh, elected members around the state. So, I I've said enough. I I think we are spending too much time on this, but I I, I do think it's uh, I think it's yeah. commonsensical. Uh, James Brewster, um, I'm going to change a little bit of direction based on what Don just said um, because uh, from my point of view, having read the document and looked at the agenda item. Um, and seeing this board over time, um, it appeared to be or appears to not be the way Don describes it, which is, hey, let's do something before something happens. Let's, let's be proactive on this. 
I'm viewing this as something that is already being reactive, that this team building was a reaction to something on this board and that it was put together for that particular reason. Um, from that vantage point, I am not uh, as vehemently opposed as, as Laura is. However, it does concern me as, as a citizen that if this was a reactionary event, that this board needed to get together and have that meeting and then put together what for me is a very simplistic list of basic professionalism, basic etiquette, and basic respect for the people that you're on a board with. Um, I don't find it necessary. I find it, I'm not going to say it's a waste of time because I think folks probably did get something out of the team building exercise, but I don't think that it's something that's needed going forward because I think that it's just an expectation that as someone who is an elected official, you do this, you know how to do this. You shouldn't have to be told or signing something that I'm going to behave in this way. You should just know to do it. And if you can't do it, then the other members of the board should say, you're not living up to it, or you should know and get off, you know? And, and so um, my, my last question is, well, my only question is, you know, so it's it's here for the five of you to sign. It will get four signatures at most. Um, but what happens in, in subsequent years? Is it something that an individual signs? It gets someone gets elected, and so they get the paper. Or every town meeting day, does it go through and get signed again by all five members? How does this document move going forward? That's a good question, and I want to mention that um, I brought this up to the board in March. Yes. So with something that I, I got consensus in unanimous agreement from every board member no, sending it. Yes, you did. did not, it was you it was and idea. you and no. Travis and you both agreed to it and Don and I no. were there. So I was notes. there and they, and they, they didn't all so agree. I'm to not it. asking you to check in right now, please. Thank you. I'm talking. Oh, and, I think um, that might be excuse me. Excuse me. Five. Excuse me. So it was something um, <laughs> just addressing what you had said. It's yeah. something that I had brought up yeah. months ago. And um, it, it was it was something that I was thinking about a while prior to March mm. because um, things change and evolve and we had new people on the board and I did see it that we didn't have uh, just an opportunity for us to talk about how we're going to act together as a board. And that's, and I, that's what I, I don't see why you would need to do that. Well, a lot, a lot of boards do it, okay, yeah. especially fine. with the turnover with, yeah. with the board is, yeah. I wanna be very clear and we can call Travis. I said I was not interested back in March. And again, if VLCT has a document, why are we duplicating? And one other thing, work with the board to establish a clear vision of the community. We have a town plan that is the drafted vision. So go ahead, Tom. Thank you, uh, Tom Cloutier. I don't know if everybody knows what we're arguing about on this stuff here, but it's proactive. She's called me, I don't know what, insulting me here. That's, it's, you're a little late to, to do this. I mean, we've had our disagreements where we react back and forth. This is not proactive. Uh, we, anyways, part of this is saying be prepared for the meeting. Uh, start on time, stay for the meeting. These are things that courteous people do no matter where they are. We vote for the, you folks to get here. We expect and anticipate you're gonna do everything on this. Why are we spending taxpayers' money for your meetings to discuss? There's no taxpayers' money spent on the meeting. You mean there was no, no nobody wrote this up? You know, we didn't spend the money. We're not spending money right now. We're not paying for these folks. That's the problem now. The problem is, is we're not being aware of the money that we are paying for. I don't want to get angry because it's not worth it. But to justify having to sign this is just not, it is not appropriate. What it sounds like you're doing is making sure the whole board speaks as one voice. In that case, we only need one of you. Four can leave. We want five individual voices 
with five individual ideas to come to a consensus. This does not help. Are you gonna present this to the, to the planning council? Are you gonna go up in front of the planning council or the DRB and say you should have one of this? That's a question. I have no intention to do that. No, because you know what they'll do. Well, it, what? It's a, it's an, this is an irrelevant conversation, Tom. This is a conversation for the board. It's and irrelevant you can, that I'm- you can, you can have your opinion on it, but to talk about Planning Commission DRB just isn't in the conversation right now. Listen, actually check for understanding and acknowledge the contribution of others. You just violated one of your things. Judy, um, are you ready for this? Is, this is a solution looking for a problem here. I'd like to call it. I'd like to call the question. Okay, thank you. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Okay. So the motion is passed. How much time did we just spend on that? And uh, number ten, Morristown Charter update. Carrie Johnson. Thank you. This will be brief. Um, we did. My goal was just to bring this up at maybe not every meeting, but every month, so that people are aware that we're um, moving towards a charter committee. Um, so you have in front of you a few decisions. Um, what we're seeking at this point is to have a meeting on the 18th of December, where hopefully we have some names of some potential members for that um, draft, not advisory charter committee. Um, so that's all that we're hoping to do today. And on the 18th, we're going to get into more details of, you know, actually scheduling the first kickoff meeting. And then at least once a month, we'll be having a meeting. So that's usually the second second question people have is how much of a time commitment is it? Um, and that's fair, given that we're all very busy. Um, I think the committee will meet once a month, maybe twice in, in certain parts when we have a couple public meetings. but. I believe it's about one one meeting a month, a couple hours. Um, I plan to help staff that so that you have questions come up, homework. I will get that done in between. Judy will help me more in those meetings. They're open to the public, um, but we are seeking some members um, to come and volunteer on this, on this really important uh, initial draft of the charter. Um, and it is intended to be fairly short and straightforward. So. Um, you can always add to a charter. This town doesn't have one right now, so it's advised both a recommendation of legal counsel, which I mentioned in November, but that we start small and you can add to it as as you see necessary. Can I ask um, when, mm -hmm. uh, when and who will decide the makeup of the committee as we did with the, uh, as you know, with the hiring um, <clears throat> committee of the manager, we have four uh, public, one, uh, select board, uh, one staff, well, I guess two staff. Well, Sarah's technically an elected. So, right. She's still under staff. Yeah. So, the, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, Sarah, who's an elected mm -hmm. and staff, and then Tina. The so, select board and um, probably myself will, the six of us will talk about it. And at, on the 18th, figure out who you want to be on that committee. And I'm just going to ask as a favor um, that no sales pitches be held from the, the select board members as a courtesy. Um, we know that one member is very actively campaigning for uh, the rooms and meals. And I think until a committee- Could you be more specific? Uh, yes, Chris, Chris spoke twice, did two different sales pitches last week. You can see it on the video, uh, promoting the rooms and meal or the um, uh, option tax. And I just think the select board should hold off on any promotion or sales pitches until the um until this committee has decided how we're going to go forward well that that rules then should be applied to all five of you yes and there shouldn't be any conversations about pro rooms and meals or against rooms and meals i think we're the reason i suggested that we have um jeff carr come is because he Absolutely isn't emotionally involved in this question, but can provide a lot of factual backup, and then people can make their decision based on that. I agree. It, it, yeah. Presenting factual data is one thing. Actively promoting, the, you know, the 
solicitation of that, I think is different. Right. No, I hear you. But I mean, that's why we're hiring. I mean, I will help you. I've been through this process, but also yep. he's an economist. So I really exactly. respect his decision and he's not going to tell us something we want to hear. He's going to just present the facts. And I think that's great. I appreciate yeah. that. Um, yep. We'll let, um, wait for that information. Yeah, that's fine. I get so, that. So for tonight, Carrie, we're, this is really just an FYI of yes. what, of what we're going to talk about on the 18th. Yes. There's no action to take. No, no action. I, I probably misspoke initially. Um, no, I don't think. You but um, yeah, I, my my mo is to just kind of warn you. Right. Warning is a bad word. That sounds negative, but alert people that we're going to be talking about something really important to avoid somebody six months from now saying that they didn't know it was coming and it was too fast. Um, we're talking about it now. We're starting in November, and you'll know on the notes um, that I put the date that you made um, the motion about when we would hold the vote, and I'm going to continue to document those dates so that people have it in front of them, um, and there there isn't any confusion about what we're doing and when we're doing it. Can you mention uh, the process for the public? How? Um, how they should submit to be considered for this oh that's a good point yeah um you can send my uh, judy an email indicating your interest um just a brief description of why you'd like to be on this committee um and maybe a little background about if if you worked what you did at that time or why you think your skills would lend themselves to this committee um, there's no prerequisites it's just it kind of helps people that don't know you or maybe might not know everything about you um to get a little picture of what who you are and why you want to be involved. Thank you. And yeah. contact information is critical. As of now, I have one applicant. That's it. Oh, come on. No, it no, doesn't. I don't think people think understand what, what's going yeah. on. And are we going to be doing any? Uh, the only outreach I've seen has been um, on front page form. Um, it's on our website, front page form, and it's in the uh, Was it in this week's newspaper? Mm. What, this Thursday? This is coming. Yeah, okay, yeah. Perfect. perfect. Because we started talking about it, and then unfortunately, yeah. because we don't have a real deep bench here, Judy was on vacation. Yeah. No so worries. it didn't get it didn't get advertised right away, which is why we're moving it to the next meeting. Yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. What do you see the composition of this meeting? I mean, I think you're on the right page. I think the composition should be a one or two select board members, community members. There's a few staff people on it um, that want to be involved, and I think that's that's great. It's nice to have some community members. Sometimes we're all in it up to our elbows and we don't maybe ask the questions that they they think are obvious. Do you have an estimated number that you think works best? Um, I'm thinking seven or I don't think it should be really high in numbers. Then it, it becomes onerous. And this is fairly straightforward. If you're focusing on um, like the local option tax, then I mean, your attorney's already written that for a number of communities, and it's it's a fairly short paragraph. That's what Dominic recommended also for the... Mm -hmm. Oh, is it? Nice. Uh -huh. Wow, great. Um, that's all I have for that great. agenda item. Um, and you. just one more question. When um, when are we anticipate Has Jeffrey Carr been hired, or what's the process, and has that all that money been approved, and... Um, that's a great question. So I reached out to him via email. I mean, he is part time. He's one of the senior economists at EPR, um, kind of glossing over the scope of work, and uh, mm -hmm. he has not responded. But I did, I did email him right around Thanksgiving. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I expect he he might have been busy. So I'll update you on that. But yeah, I did reach out to him, say that, and told him. Um, I followed up on our initial conversation that you were moving forward with it, um, that we had a limited budget, we're trying to keep costs down, um, that I'd like him to come to a couple meetings, provide um, some summary, um, some summaries on revenue estimations and those kind of things, um, and ask him if he could work within the budget that I had given him. So we'll see. Okay, thank you. When you're talking about him coming to meetings, it would be with the, the uh, Charter Committee. Um, well, both. I think it, it would be interesting for him to come to one meeting, but I think it's important to have him at um, some community meetings as well. Um, some people are fine with just an executive summary or one page summary. Um, others might want to get granular and ask some really deep questions and uh, he can answer those and support the, the numbers that he's going to give us for revenue estimation. And do you have any Estimates. idea what, his, what the timeline is for his um, uh, research and I don't know yet, but um, when I worked with him in St. Albans Town, it was only a few months. Okay. Um, he's 
he's been doing this a lot a lot longer than I have so he doesn't it doesn't take that long it's just um, <clears throat> some of the he looks at other things other than just the revenue um, projections so some of those other things take a little bit of time and have um we approved um holding off until uh November November didn't we yes, yes. okay yep. so that's already a done deal yeah and, and he was in he actually recommended that first yeah. he was like March is, too, is too seems quick. too soon. I mean, it, it can be done, but there's no reason to push it through that quickly um, or try to push okay. it through. It's not not advised. Great, thank you. I see someone's hand up on the Zoom, Carly's iPad. I think that was the last um, Hi, yes, this is Kathy Chafee. Um, I just wanna say that um, this last article before this one on your team building, um, I had my hand up before Tom got up there to speak. And then Don called the question so fast that nobody even asked me to speak. And I feel that this is your way of silencing people. And I don't appreciate it. It's not right to the public. So I just want to make this record that this has happened more than once with me. And it's not right to the taxpayers that you just don't even pay attention to us. Thank you. So, so I didn't either. Yeah. So Kathy, I was the one who called the question, and I apologize because I did not see your hand up there. Um, and um, you know, I, I apologize for um, it was not our intent to uh, preclude you from voicing your opinion. Any old business? Okay, approve warrants. I'll make a motion to approve the warrants. I'll second that. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And warrants have been approved. Department head reports. Anyone like to speak? This isn't so. This is Tina Sweet, finance director. It's not so much of a department report as it is a great big huge thank you to Judy Alberry for she converted all of our phone systems for the entire town over to a newer system, saved us a lot of money. Um, she's doing um, some in-depth research with our network and our software programs to try to go out to bid to save us even more money. And that takes a lot of time and effort on her part. And I just want everybody to know this and I want to thank her deeply for this. Thank you. Was that the reason you lost internet? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> that's, that's, no. Thank you, Tina. Any anyone else? There is one more person. Okay. Anna, are you ready? Oh, okay. She's on Zoom. Hi, sorry. Anna Green, uh, Recreation Coordinator. Um, I just wanted to give an update on the turkey trot. Um, we held that on Thanksgiving Day. Last year was our first year um, holding the turkey trot, and we had um, 90 registered participants. This year we had 140, um, which is a really good turnout. Um, just give a shout out to Trisha Follert for helping to organize that. Um, Sophie Beck and the whole Beck family. Um, Richard Craig, thank you for helping out on Thanksgiving morning. Um, police department, there's a lot of volunteers who showed up and it was just a really good community event. Um, also just wanted to give an update on the Morristown skating rink. Um, we began fundraising at the beginning of November for a new skating rink setup um, that was more durable and long lasting than the previous one that we had. Um, our skating shed, as well as all of our skates were washed away in the flood um, and they were in, in a flood zone, unfortunately. So we couldn't apply for FEMA money to replace them. Um, so our goal was $20,000, um, for the setup for lighting, um, and all of the equipment that we would need. Um, we were given a, uh, we were notified that All Saints Academy had actually purchased a skating rink from the same company that we were looking into, um, just, I think three years ago, um, and had set it up for one winter. Um, so we were able to purchase that for a significantly lower um, price than what we were looking at. 
And we have now raised um, $9,300, which is almost our halfway point to upgrading for a full size skating rink. So that feels really exciting and a, a really good recreation opportunity for the winter months um, down at the Oxbow. So we have the first um, flood of water on it now, hoping to freeze in the next couple of days and we can start layering and um, local electric is coming on the 21st of December to install floodlights on the side of the Oxbow Pavilion and um, some string lights kind of around the perimeter of the skating rink to help with visibility. So Anna, do you have a, a tentative open date? It's kind of dependent on ice conditions, um, but hopefully as soon as the ice is ready to go, we can open. And what are your plans for maintaining the ice or are there any plans? For... Um, we have a few volunteers who have been on board in the past who are willing to help maintain the ice. We have a snow blower um, and we have the, um, there's a, hyd uh, it's not a hydrant, it's a frost free spigot that's right at the corner of the skating rink. So it's really easy access for um, water right there. And so for this year, are you anticipating that it's bring your own skates? Or well, part of part of the money um, is hopefully going towards like skate sharpening vouchers um, for this year uh, mm -hmm. to hopefully help people with that. Um, if there is skate donations, maybe with used skates that we could get them, you know, nice and sharp for people to use. Um, if there's extra funds, yeah, my plan is to purchase skates for people to be able to borrow for free. Okay, great. Thank you. I'm, I'm excited about an ice rink myself. So awesome. thank you. Thank nice you. Job. And when it is open, we will put that on the website. Very yes, great. I'm really hoping to have an opening skating party, probably the beginning of January. Thanks, Anna. Thank Anyone you. Else? Thank you. I think that's it. Okay. Town Administrator's Report. Um, I will fill in on that one. I believe there's a big shout out that needs to go out to our highway department who <laughs> removed all this snow that we all didn't really know was coming. <laughs> so thank you for keeping uh, the roads open very much. I think that's it. Okay. Select board comments. Richard, would you like to start? Well, I just would like to echo Anna's sentiment. The turkey trial was fantastic. There's 100 from 90 to 140 people, and the weather was fan. The weather was perfect, and I called in a favor of a previous student at 10 o'clock the night before to come help time, and he <laughs> showed up with his laptop, and we were yeah, it was it was a good, really good event. Anna and Trish did a great job. Excellent. Go next. Go ahead, um, Laura. I um. <clears throat> As uh, working with the Morrisville Farmers Market, we met with Anson Tebbets this week um, and to um, really promote and advocate for farmers markets um, and to uh, advocate for money for the cash crop program and the cash crop plus plus, which uh, for those who don't know, brings in a lot of revenue directly um, to us and it's federal money that goes to our farmers. Um, I will say that um, the sad news is, is that Anson Tebbets um, did kind of put out a warning that um, <clears throat> where there was a lot of funding last year that it's very likely that a lot of the funding uh, will be directed to flood this year. Um, so, which is understandable. Um, it's just hard. He also mentioned and gave me this, which I suspect that Anna and others have, uh, the bill, he highly encouraged everybody for the building um, uh, grants program, building community grants to apply for these. And Anna, they're just, you probably know about this, but there's a recreational facilities grant program on this. Um, so um, it's nice to know that this, this is separate and that he seemed to think that these funds would be uh, available. So that's good to know. Uh, my other um, concern is that um, it's come to my attention um, and I would have would like to ask that and I'm not sure what the procedure is um, that we 
relook and revote on the Oxbow um, tree program. Um, I feel like we didn't have all the information in place to vote. Uh, I did not know that Todd is the Lomel County flood expert. He was not consulted or informed. And I think uh, out of uh, courtesy to him and potentially to uh, keep him in his job is to reopen this and, and hear his expert opinion. He's schooled in this. He's the flood uh, management director for Lamoille County. Um, and so I would like to have put this back on the agenda for us to revisit this um, and at minimum have uh, allow Todd to come in and talk with us as the expert. Um, and I, I, because I voted for it and I don't feel like I would have the information. I'm not faulting anyone, um, but. Um, well, are we happy to it's too much? It's not an agenda item? No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, so I, I'm saying just, just, just a, just a saying why I would like it to be on the agenda. Okay. Making a formal statement. Which of you gentlemen would like to go next? Um, really have two things. Um, and both um, are germane to um, putting together a meeting with the trustees this month. Um, Judy, um, I think that it would make a lot of sense that um, we uh, continue the conversation with the trustees about the town plan. Um, and begin to discuss uh, language change to amend the town plan because we both have to agree to both bodies have to agree to specific language to move this forward. Um, and I think that um, after our last trustees meeting, which I thought went really well, um, it would be good to revisit it this month if possible because um, we also have uh, pen they have pending legislation that they want to address. I think that we could potentially be party to that, um, particularly when it comes to um, water and light. So if you would be willing to reach out to Tom Snip and see if there was a time appropriate, if they're A, interested, and B, um, would like to uh, schedule a time for our boards to get together to have a few discussion points, I think that would be prudent. Would that not be considered an agenda item? Seems similar yeah, to mine. I was just thinking. Just saying. I was just thinking, Laura. Yeah. Go ahead, uh, Just one item. Thanks to our highway departments as well. Like, I got up this morning with no power, like many people in Morristown, and Sorry, it was Laura. nice to see. <laughs> I think Jamie, most, most of us had that. most of us had our electricity. <laughs> and it was nice to see the uh, the roads clear, and of course, I was surprised this morning that that the schools in Memorial South had not closed and. See, as far as I know, the buses got around town safely and got the kids to school. So, thank you to them. Great, thank you. All right, I don't have anything to add for this evening. Um, community comments. Go ahead, Jamie. Um, I just like to say quickly, I'm not a huge. Oh, uh, what's that? Just have to introduce yourself. Oh, I thought I did. Uh, James Brewster. Um, I, I do use the town website uh, periodically, not a super lot, um, but I do want to say that the last time uh, I looked at it, I was uh, I was impressed. Um, I know that our website is very difficult to deal with. Uh, it's not really user friendly, um, but I found uh, when I looked at it this last time uh things have been moved around um you know important current things have been pushed to the top um there's some eye-catching visual things i don't know if judy you're doing this or I am. Right? oh yeah but definitely um, it is definitely uh noticeable um that uh the change to the website is is making it more useful um and hopes folks will be able to find their immediate needs mm -hmm. more readily available within a click or two so, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Tony, Cody, Cody Hill. So I got three questions. I'd like to know how many square feet the current police station is. I don't know. Does anybody know that answer? We can find, find out. out for you. Yeah. Small. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that's it. No. <laughs> that's and, and when would I get an answer? Uh, when can you get an answer? 
Well, we'll um, this you. week, I'm, I did a grant recently, and I did just call and is it Andy? Yeah. He, he knows all those things, so we can get that to you fairly quickly. Jason's got my. I think Jason's got my contact, or he he's not doing this no more. He is not doing this any after today, I believe. Oh. But we will get. I'm sure we can get it from. Okay, him. and question number two is how many feet are in back of the current fire station? How many? What's a setback? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, how many how many feet are are usable for for in back of our fire station right now? So how much space is available? Yeah. For development, you're thinking. Yeah. Behind fire department. But yeah. Jason what do you think? Jason's. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, you are. Question, Jason so. Kelly, first assistant chief, Morrisville Fire. We currently have a deck on the back of our property. That's probably ten by ten generator in the backyard. And that's it. I'd say there's probably 20 feet from the back of the building, okay. maybe 30 at the most square feet each direction. So 20 by 20 or 20 by 30 if you're lucky. There's there's zoning setbacks that are relative to that too, which will play a factor in that, Tony. Okay. And uh, question three is what is the current number for the budget right now today? What are we going to be voting on if it was voted on today? We haven't finished all of our well, I know there's one more. I know the general. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, what's it up to right now? I don't have that. I don't have we're going to look at this as a total. Right a total I mean, we're not going to vote on certain segments. No, but we just here. hear all kinds of stuff out there. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's really out of hand the way the public. And, and that oftentimes happens. Yeah. Um, but I think in fairness to the process, Tony, um, waiting until we have all the department, you know, uh, budgets in place and Fair discussed, enough. as well as the revenue stream that we're talking about too, because it's all going to flow down to the bottom line. Yeah, I think. I mean, yeah, I would say it's fluid. We just hire, um, you know, an HR director, so um, you know, there's things are moving around. So nothing against that young lady right there. Welcome. But that's an example. You guys don't listen to the taxpayers at all. So I'd like to respond to that if I can. Yeah, I think yeah. <laughs> yeah. you don't let us talk when you do. So I mean, if fair is fair and according to your, Go ahead, just your, tell your, your here, uh, I have a couple of things I want to say. I'm really impressed with the, the level of increase in transparency that the board has shown here from this original budget. We are seeing drafts of them that we did not see last year. I see Tina has has them on the uh, town site, which was never done before. Uh, you have agreed uh, to Zoom or, or record whatever the uh, the planning council, the DRB, whether they do, they are. I guess they're going to, and that is a big step forward uh, to help to help us uh, residents understand what's going on. There's a lot going on. There's a lot we don't know. And the more you put out, the easier it is for us to, to comprehend and, and vote with, a, with some knowledge of what's going on. That being said, I'd like to uh, welcome Elizabeth here. Uh, as you know, I was opposed to hiring an HR before we got a town manager. It seems that we could have waited a few more months and to do this, it would have saved the taxpayers a lot of money. And, and I'm, not, I'm not convinced so far that this town could have lasted four or five more months without an HR. I'm glad we have a very capable HR with us right now. I've seen her, her credentials, they're very impressive, and we're lucky to have her. Unfortunately, it should have waited and why there was only two of the, of the select board on the, on the committee of hiring has me perplexed and a little concerned. I'll leave that for another time. On the shoveling, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, well, he's not here, for the uh, snow removal, I would like to make a suggestion that the fellow in that $159,000 machine get out when he sees the crossing the telephone poles where the uh, public crossings are, they hit the button so they can cross the street, clear the snow away from there. This morning, our illustrious town 
administrator, the interim, stood at the window as we watched this 60-year-old woman shovel that away so she could hit that button across the street. And a, a town, a town, uh, that's true, by the way, uh, ask, ask Jason, and Jason was there, and a town employee shoveled the one that's on this side. I don't know how many they are, but that fellow can get out, shovel the snow off so people can hit that button across the street and not get run over. I think that's all, except for the trees. I did not know about the trees on the Oxbow. You put trees on the Oxbow, the next 100 year flood, which is going to be five, six years down the run, those trees are going to be down at the dam. They're going to clog that dam and we're going to be out of electricity. I don't know why you're putting trees in Oxbow and not in this parking lot over here to set those orange things. I think that's it. Thank you. Two minutes up. Hmm? Thank you. Okay, I'd like to entertain uh, oh, other business. Do we have other business? No, I don't have anything. I thought we had executive session. session. Executive yeah. session. Do you have right. that? I do, but I, there was nothing. no other things, no. just executive no. session. Right. So the board is going to move into executive session. Uh, we have two motions here. So I will move to go into executive session because I find that premature general public knowledge would clearly place a public body or person involved at a substantial disadvantage. I'll make a motion. I don't know. I'll second second that. That. I have a smoking motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? Go ahead. Just quick. When I read Come on, James. Come on, Pierre. <laughs> James Brewster, um, and you all know my bone of contention with executive session. Um, but when I've read up on it, um, and I was the one that initially got this to be a two motion as opposed to a one motion uh, based upon VL, CTTC, whatever um, recommendations. But it also says that within making these motions, there should be some amount of additional context potentially at all possible. Right now, it's just very vague. I mean, we don't know why you're going into executive session. I mean, I think that there is the opportunity for us to understand why you're going into, you know, going in because we're going something. But right now, it's just very bland. You go into executive session. We have no idea why. So I guess I'm asking that as you go into executive session, if there is an opportunity to provide more context, because I think what happens is the motion comes up and people just go, Yay, because ultimately you have this discussion period to discuss whether or not you really think you should be going in to executive session, which never takes place. So I I'm just asking that perhaps some additional context be added to these motions more than just the generic statement that's being presented in statute. So on the agenda now, I don't know how long this has been happening, but after it says executive session it also gives the reason and in this case tonight it yeah. the posted one said personnel and you can't give any additional i mean i understand that's pretty good but there's no no that that's legally what we're supposed to do and that's what i've done in the other two okay. towns i worked in um in this case um in any case you know we're, we're public employees but we have sure. some um, expectation for privacy when it comes to personal. Absolutely. I'm just going on, you know, the, the yeah. recommendations that I've seen yep. from DLTC that there should be some additional mm -hmm. context provided beyond just what's stated yep. in statute, if at all possible. And there is. Okay. So you just have to read the agenda or the agenda is outside in the hallway. Okay. And I guess I yep. would further just ask, um, because I've missed some of the meetings and I'm just looking at, um, at the minutes, um, as a procedural question, when you go into executive session, are you going into executive session based upon the motions, going through that one, then coming out and doing it again? Or are you doing all of your executive session motions up front and then hitting all those things? We're doing them the up front. We're yeah. doing them up front. And is that correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. So you don't need to say, we're going to executive session for this, go in, do it, come out, no. then do the next motion. You don't have to come out and do that. That's very onerous anyway. And okay. Yeah. No, 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 you've had your community. Oh, I'm sorry, come up. Yep, never mind. Thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate it. Tom Cody. Yes. Massachusetts in the uh, 
have minutes of their executive sessions. I saw the, the statue for Vermont. It doesn't forbid you from taking minutes. It says you don't have to take minutes. I don't know if that's really a good idea or not, but there, maybe there is something there you could, without disclosing confidential uh, uh, any information at all, do it. I mean, do something that, because there's a, a lot of people are thinking, you know, why are they going in executive session every, every meeting? And there's a lot going on. That's the reason you're going in there. But I don't know if that's, that's a feasible solution. It, it's not, and, and most communities don't do it. Okay. Um, and, and the public is informed because if any decisions are made, they can't vote in executive session. It's done afterwards and it's recorded. Okay. So you may not know who argued against whom. We don't or need to. You don't, you don't necessarily need to because you know what the results are. Yeah, okay. Right. And it, you know, it That's provides. That's done now, anyway. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, Tommy on um, Zoom. Yes, this is Nancy Donovan. And I just wanted to make a comment. I don't think that we should be adding anything, uh, trees or anything else at the Oxbow that's not already there in place. It's not if we have another flood, it's when we have another flood. And all of that is going to go down and stop up the dam or other waterways and cause more flooding. I think we need to be judicious, not only with the money, because it's going to be lost with everything that's put there, but it's just the collateral damage from it as well. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, so we have a motion and a second. <laughs> Thank you. For, we, have a, we have a second? Yes, we okay, thank you. Motion is second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I would further move to go into executive session to discuss the appointment or employment or evaluation of a public officer or employee subject to T1 VSA 313A3 to include town, uh, excuse me, interim town administrator Jason Luneau and project manager Carrie Johnson. Second. I have a motion a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Is that it? That's it. That's it.